Barry Goldstein is a teaching professional who takes great pride in his work. He's enthusiastic and knowledgeable. Those are qualities that appeal to PGA Tour winner Mike Stanley. In 1993, Mike won the Compact Classic. Now he's spending quality time with Barry in an effort to return to the winner's circle on the world's grandest stage. Tap into some of their secrets tonight on Academy Live. Which of Rick Smith's students is making the most progress? Dennis and Marilyn are halfway through the battle in our troubleshooter challenge for better for worse. Also, check in on the progress of the LPGA Tour's Beth Bader. Since the inception of her new health assessment program with Dr. James Rippey just a few months ago, she's already recorded her first top five finish. Pull up a couch and join us right now. The following is an encore presentation of Academy Live. The Golf Channel and the PGA of America present Academy Live. Hi everybody, I'm Kelly Tillman. Welcome to another edition of Academy Live. Great to have with me Barry Goldstein, who winters in Florida and summers in New York, does a lot of instruction, and PGA Tour player Mike Stanley, winner in 1993 at the Compact Classic. First of all, how did you guys get to know each other? Mike, why don't you start? Well, I know last year uh, BC opened up in Endicott. My son was just really getting started into playing golf and wanted to go hit some balls. We took him to a driving range and met Barry there. Barry spent three or four days with him, just working with him and helping him get the fundamentals and just really get started into golf. Like father, like son, you see a lot of similarities in the swings? A lot of similarities. <laughs> both good people, both working on certain things in their swing that cause the ball to go in certain directions. Um, his son did great last year. and. Mike's going to do great in the future, and yeah, it's, it's fun to work with the father and the son. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your operation, how you went sure. through the summer? Sure. Um, well, it just started about four years ago. This is my fourth summer in uh, upstate New York, home of the BC Open, Johnson City, I actually teach at. And uh, I've been a Coral Springs, Florida resident for about to 22 years. Good so spot. It was, yeah, it was a great spot. And it was actually took a big move for me to move upstate New York, but very happy with it. Nicest people you'd ever want to meet in upstate New York. It's, it's just been a ton of fun, so I'm really glad I'm up there. What are some of the things that you want Barry to help you fix in your golf game to, to continue to, to keep going to the next level? Uh, I think of a lot of it's just, uh, just a, a, an extra eye to see if I'm getting the club in the right spots where I, I need to get it to get the club down and get the ball going in the right direction. So it's just an extra eye, to, a, good, a good eye to see where it's at. How can you, you, you can win a golf tournament in 1993 and then you, you go back sometimes to the basics to build up to yeah, that. Sure. What is it like to go through the experience? Yeah. It's tough. I mean, it's uh, you got to put a lot of work into it. You know, you you know, it's a lot of work. You got to get you figure out where you're at. Okay, I got here by doing this, and then you see the other guys. Okay, they're getting here by doing this extra stuff. So you just I don't think you want to take your golf swing apart. You just want to just fix it. You know, a little fine tuning stuff. Give us an idea of what you guys do to fine tune and to fix these things, Barry. Just this past weekend, Mike and I were talking. Mike, in general, is a great ball striker. Mike has a very good golf swing. Um, like a lot of world-class players, his tendency when he misses, the club will get stuck behind him on the way down. And if the hands don't work properly, the arms, the ball's going to go into the right trees. And that's Mike's career pretty much. He's either been right down the middle or in the right trees. And basically what Mike works on for what? A couple of years. Couple all years. Mike really works on is trying to keep the width in his backswing and the width in his down, downswing in particular. So the club stays in front of his body. It never gets stuck behind him. Again, world-class player Mike, these are small things he's working on. Um, he's had the same golf swing. Mike's got, golf swing has gotten better, mm -hmm. but Mike's been a great ball striker for a long time. Give us a sense of the old golf swing, put it in motion for us, Mike, and the new golf swing and what it looks like right now. I think the old one is I, I grew up out in West Texas, so I got low to the ground. I like to hit the ball low with a hook, so I would always get the club hooded going back. And in, in coming down, I'd get it stuck behind me you know, I could either flip it and hit it low, or I hit it to the right. For those at home who may not know what hood it is, that means the club face is pointing down instead of the ground yeah, too much. Yeah, instead of up, it's pointing down. I think square is getting it up in here. I used to get it over here, mm -hmm. and then you get it up here, and it, you know, you get it back, and it'd be here, so you'd have to either slide out in front of it, or you know, you'd flip it to the left. A little bit of a homemade motion. A lot there. of a homemade motion. So what know. does the new move look like? <laughs> Stand up a little <laughs> taller, and get the club up, get the toe going up a little bit better. It gets my arms away from my body a little bit and gets it a little higher up here to where I don't want to get it so close to me. So when I come down, it stays out. It kind of stays out in front of me and with me. Instead of when I would fire before, 
I would fire and the club would stay back here. Mm -hmm. I never could get the club back around to the ball. Now this sounds to me like problems that the average golfer doesn't have. He's a, having problems attacking too much from the inside. Give us a little bit of a, uh, elaborate a little bit on that. That's 100% correct. Mike, again, world-class player dealing with some things that the average golfer is not dealing with. When Mike gets stuck here, that would be a great problem for most of the people that I teach to have. Most golfers do the opposite of Mike and the club works this way. But one thing Mike neglected to mention in, in what he's working on, by, he said he likes to stand taller. He also likes to get his weight a little more heel on oriented than out on his toes. So when he's tall, he's also not hanging out over the ball. Correct, Mike? Correct. Trying to feel like his weight stays a little more over let's say the heel part of his foot than the toe part than, than the toe part so he's got too much weight in the toes and what you're doing by putting weight in the heels is, is balancing him it just feels more like it's in the heel yeah. and that's what makes you feel yeah, taller you, if you get on your toes you know, your weight's up here above there's nothing above you get in your heels mm -hmm. and it kind of goes up through your legs kind of attaches to your body also do you think better. that gives you more room coming down as yeah, well yeah i think it does you know because you can stay back and you get your hands out here instead of getting over here mm -hmm. you know doing this you can stay back and the club will get out in front of you better. All right, well, you know, we look forward to tapping in more and more to your golf swing. It sounds like you took that little bit of a homemade motion and really turned it into an athletic move. Yes. And that has to feel good to you. All right, we've got plenty coming up tonight on Academy Live. Obviously, more with Barry and Mike as the hour continues. We're checking in on Lesson 5 with Dennis and Marilyn Casey. See who's getting better faster. We'll update the poll results, let you decide if Marilyn or Dennis is making more progress right now in Tour Vision. Something fun, learning how to hit unique bunker shots. We saw a ton of them <laughs> at Muirfield. It was certainly on display. And Dr. Rippy stops by for, with some positive news on Beth Bader's progress. She got her first top five. We're excited about it. That and more coming your way. Stick around. Welcome back to Academy Live. Barry Goldstein is with us, teaching pro out of New York and also in Florida in Carl Springs. And uh, his influences include the great Jimmy Ballard and Jim McClain. Of course, Jim McClain down in the Miami area for most of his time during the year. An instructional, instructional editor for Golf Tips Magazine. And as an amateur once teed it up, against a guy that we're all familiar with, Tiger Woods. And we can't go without checking in on Mike Stanley's career here. Runner-up to Scott for Plank in the 86 NCAA Tournament for University of Houston. His daughter's middle name, Augusta. I'm thinking that you have something there that's in common with Augusta National. 29 top 25 finishes in his PGA Tour career. And of course, as we mentioned before, he won in 1993, and I'm sure Augusta National is the inspiration for daughter Augusta? You know, she was born in uh, December the year before, so it really wasn't. It was just a name we liked, and it just happened to be, you know, I got in the Masters later that year, then I got in the next year, and a lot of people thought that was it, but it was, it was just a name my wife and I really enjoyed. That's, it's beautiful, though. It's a beautiful name. And uh, your story with Tiger Woods, that must have been cool. It was before he really kind of took off on the world stage. Yeah, Kelly, he was an 11th grader. <laughs> um, but he was head and f he was just tremendous at that age. Um, it's quite humbling, really. Hit the ball so far at that age. It's in the Dixie Amateur in Fort Lauderdale, and uh, he flew in from California, and he was bombing it then. You, you knew he was going to be something very special. Can you believe how much he's beefed up since those days? He was a stick in the 11th <laughs> yeah. grade. I know he was. Yeah, he was a young-looking lisp. Now he's a big man. <laughs> yeah, he's amazing. Well, wait, let's get back to your golf swing, Mike. We were talking about it in the first segment there about how you were trying to widen your arc on yeah. your takeaway and your downswing. What kind of drills did you work on to, to accomplish that? Well, I've got a guy I work with in Houston, John Ankenbrand, and he says a lot of right-hand swings. Mm -hmm. Just swing with the right hand. It keeps it away from you better. You can get better extension through it. And then another one is when I would, when I would always get it hooded back under here, my wrist at the top would be flatter over mm -hmm. the, and we're trying to get it back up this way, and that keeps me keeps this arm instead of being under it here to get it up a little bit higher As so so when i get it you know it's not here but it's up here a little bit you know just that little bit of movement raises the arms up a little higher did you ever experience any kind of wrist pain from those positions because i know you had a lot of power in your swing i've been very fortunate I've, I've stayed very healthy in my body my back and my hands i've been very fortunate with that and one other thing when you were doing those right-handed swings at any point while you're doing those do you stop Do you put the left hand on just to get a feel that you're not taking the club too far away from your body yeah i don't think you can though because you know once you get your arm your left arm back on there you know it'll get back out and it won't you know you can't reach it out there that far yeah. So I don't think you can get it too far. Yeah, I mean, these are these drills, obviously, that you employ with your students from time to time? Well, again, yeah, not many people are dealing with some of the problems Mike's dealing True. with. Um, but I think for Mike, the whole goal of all those drills, Mike wants to get the club in front of him. That's, that's what Mike wants. 
And when he doesn't get in those positions, he's going to get stuck behind him and he's not going to hit it as well as he's capable of. And even when you're doing these drills, I'm sure you still struggle from time to time dropping that club in the, yeah. in the pocket a little too you know, early. I've played for 30 years this way and I've <laughs> been trying to change it the last year and a half and it's still, you know, it's still, I still get in there and I still take it close and it gets it in here and I still get it there, but I don't get it in there as bad as I used to and I can, I can seem to know when it goes that way and be able to say, okay, during the round, say, okay, I'm getting it a little bit here. This is the tendencies. And have some good points that I, the guy in Houston I've worked with, we worked on some good points to look for and little things to change instead of, okay, i got to overhaul my whole swing. Yeah. You know, just little bitty things to get it back online. All right. Well, thanks for those tips. Let's uh, go to the Internet and take sure. a dot-com question. Why don't we? Is there a rule of thumb for how many clubs to go up in, say, a 10-mile-per-hour wind? Is it one club for every five miles per hour? That's from Bernie in Nova Scotia. And uh, you mentioned West Texas and the winds. Uh, we've seen some wind lately, especially at the Open Championship. Not only was it cold and rainy, but of course, Mother Nature in Scotland typically throws in that wind and they deal with anywhere from 10 to 20 miles per hour. Uh, guys were really bundling up and trying to, to play through this wind. How do you do that? Yeah, I think growing up at West Texas, we had a lot of wind. And, uh, you know, I've never really heard of a club for every five. I think a lot of us just feel. You know, if it's cold, it's not going to go as far as it's windy. If it's warm and windy, it'll go a little farther. So I think a lot of it's feel and what kind of shots you hit. You know, if you hit a high shot, it's going to take a lot more off of it than if you hit a low penetrating shot. It won't take as much off of it. I think it's just a personal preference. Mm -hmm. Barry? I agree with Mike. Uh, a lot of wind in Florida. Very rarely do you go out to play golf where the flag is not twisting and bending. I think Mike described it as feel, but I think also sometimes you just learn that the harder you swing, the more the ball is going to rise. And what you want to do is swing easy and keep the ball below the wind. The gentleman's question, I think maybe there used to be an old adage for every 10 miles an hour you, you drop down a club. But I, I agree with Mike. It's much more of a feel thing. And I, I think maybe, of course, you do want to drop down and take a little more club. Swing a little easier and keep the ball lower than you're trying to hit it with a full normal swing. Can you jump in what we like to call the penalty box here and uh, give us an idea of, of how to yeah. make that ball flight lower? Well, the first thing you want to do is, Mike, I don't think you want to play the ball forward ever when the wind's hailing like that. I agree. I don't think you do. Most good players will play the ball back of center. And, of course, in general, they're always going to finish lower. They're not going to have the big high finish that they would have if they were throwing an eight, up, eight iron up in the air to land softly. I also think another big thing besides keeping the ball back is as you're making impact, there's not a lot of twisting with the hands. It's almost like you're kind of covering it with your body. Mm -hmm. And I think that's how you keep the ball down. I think most players that have a high ball flight that continue to try to finish real high, I don't think they're going to have a lot of success in the wind. Is there another word for that? Is it called knockdown shot? Knockdown, yeah. Um, Gosh, punch. I think, you know, I think a punch, punch shot. Punch, punch shot, shot you yeah. Know, you watched a lot of the long irons, and the three woods tiger hits off the tee to keep rolling. Yeah. You know, yeah. he hits him, and he, he doesn't have much follow through. So that doesn't, you know, like Barry was saying, it doesn't get the ball up in the air as much. Right. And they seemingly go just as far. <laughs> oh, sometimes farther. <laughs> yeah. we got to take a quick break, guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we go to break, we want to remind you that we do want to get to our troubleshooter challenge, for better or for worse. Dennis Casey is up first, and he's got a little bit of an overactive lower body, much like you've dealt with for a little while there, Mike. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to get to that. Here's a look at what you have to look forward to. Why in the world, when I went back, would I have all this activity Legs straightening, pulling away to try to get back to that consistent okay. impact. You can't do it. Okay, so making great swings, but let's just stabilize our lower a little bit. Keep our hands together. Good. And just get a feel for it. Welcome back to Academy Live. We're going to talk a little bit about chipping, which is probably the most important shot if you want to learn how to score. One of the things I see the amateurs do wrong, a couple of things. Mike, why don't you set up in the wrong way? Notice how wide Mike's stance is here, how the ball's in the middle. Most amateurs set up this way to chip a ball. What we want to do, Mike, why don't you show us a little narrower stance. Mike feels like his weight is pronounced on his front side, correct, Mike? You're right. Where do you feel you have it? Right through here. Notice Mike's hands are choked down on the club a little bit. He's gripping down on the shaft. That's for control. Mike's going to execute a shot, and I want you to watch his body. Watch how there's not a lot of body work. Go ahead, Mike. See how quiet Mike's lower body was there? There was not a lot of kicking or moving of his lower body. Mike, do you feel when you're chipping these well your body's working a lot, or it's mostly uh, shoulders? You want, it to, you want it to be real still. You just want to swing the club as little as possible, get the ball on the ground fast, and let it run out. 
Next time you find yourself with a green side chip, try some of these tips and I think you'll find your score will go down. Uh, your score went down immediately doing that tip out there. I mean, it's, it's a common occurrence for you, right? Knocking uh, it in like that? Not lately, it hasn't been. <laughs> How much time do you spend on chipping and pitching and putting versus the long game? Because too many people spend too much time banging balls and not enough time on the short range game. I think uh, lately they built a golf course by me in Houston, Magnolia Creek. Great public golf course. It's got a great short game area. Probably one of the best I've seen in Houston. And I'll go out there and just hit wedges and chips and putts. But it's just, you know, I, I've really worked a lot from 105 yards in, mm -hmm. and it's, it's shown. You are a fan of Dave Pels. I like Dave Pels a lot. I think he's probably the, the master of the short game. What is the biggest thing you learned from him when it came to this chipping technique? I, I just think this, the way he sets his students up is, is very, very easy to repeat. He gets them very narrow in their stance and gets the ball back in their stance and tries to take the body out of the shot. What Mike tends to do a little bit is use the right knee a little too much to kind of help the ball along. Mm -hmm. Unlike Mike, uh, the place I practice at Colony West Country Club down in, in Tamarack, Florida has a great chipping and putting area. I put in hours out there. I enjoy practicing that part of the game and um, I think it's probably the most important scoring shot. I really do. Yeah, I mean you, you agree with that? I agree. You know, you know the guys that are playing good, you know, like Ernie up at the British, miss a green, gets yeah. it up and down. You know, if you can't get it up and down when you miss a green, you're going to be in trouble. All right. Well, uh, we know a guy who is, uh, he's okay in the short game department. Right now he's working on the long game. His name is Dennis Casey. He's, he's married to Maryland. They're having a little battle. I hope you guys have been keeping track of it. For better or for worse, this troubleshooter challenge continues. Rick Smith works with Dennis Casey, and they're trying to quiet that lower body. Enjoy. Previously on the troubleshooter challenge. Marilyn and Dennis Casey took their grudge match from the golf course to the guiding hands of Rick Smith, where they have been honing their skills with practice How good is that? and drills. Excellent golf swing. Now, that's the best swing you've ever made in your life. As they continue to work on the long and short of it, Dennis's travels land him out in the cold with no place to call dome. Well done. Boy, that's a nice change. Thank you. He's awfully good for um, not having practice. Do you believe him? No. I think he's been <laughs> hiding out at the dome. <laughs> no, the dome blew down. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> he found a new dome. Now stay there. Okay, just come back to the ball. Now, remember the old impact drill yeah. where, your, where your hips were here and your hands were here? Doesn't it make sense that if I want to be here through impact, why in the world would I go ahead and go back to it? Why in the world when I went back would I have all this activity, legs straightening, pulling away, to try to get back to that consistent okay. impact? You can't do it. Okay, so making great swings, but let's just stabilize our lower a little bit. Keep our hands together. Good. And just get a feel for it. Good. A few more times. Do it again. Hold it. Hold it. Right leg's getting real straight. Let's oh. keep it. Let's stay flexed. That can work in a little bit. But just, just feel a little bit more down. You feel how that's flexed? Okay. Let's feel that way. <clears throat> just hit a few shots and get comfortable with it. Okay. Very good. And I wanted to give him some stretching and some mirror work that will allow him to feel like he's successfully turning without his lower body being so active. Now, from knees down, you're going to be stable, and you're going to feel your trunk, your chest, your stomach, your left shoulder is going to go back behind over the right knee, and you're, you're going to feel like your right knee is stable. Don't you feel down? Look, look, look in the mirror. Don't you feel stable here with the lower? Yes. Okay, good. And then we push and turn and go right back. Now look how I push more off my right. Now look in the mirror. Okay. And as you push, you don't want to move out in front. Push. Good. Push. Good. Push. Push. Okay, now look at your left foot. Look how square it is. Flare it open. Good. Flex knees. Stable. Upper body turns back. Do you feel that left yeah. shoulder behind? Okay, now let's do a stretch without the club. When you get to this point, right knee is stable, arms are here, and track back on the inside. You're not going to come over, right? No. You're going to move and push off, and you're going to feel the inside plane coming in, and you're going to go right back to here. And that's the kind of mirror work that'll help you. Okay, so you do your stretches, 
and you'll be fine, okay? Now, I'll show you a little teaching mirror that you can use, too. Okay. Take a look at your shoulder alignment. You see where you look down and they oh, look yeah. square. Remember yeah. how your yeah. shoulders okay. were open? All right. Okay, so go here. The, this is the player's image. It's a swing mirror that's really helpful for somebody that's not playing a lot. You need to work on your swing. Where's your left shoulder? Is it here? It needs to be in this box. Head, shoulder, and swing. Okay. You feel that? Yes. A little different? Yes. Excellent. That's fabulous there. Good work. It's becoming fun now. It, it, it's not any fun to hit a bad golf swing. I think I've improved dramatically, now it's a matter of consistency. As you can see, Dennis Casey making a lot of progress with Rick Smith. If you'd like to follow that progress, and of course Maryland's as well, you can log on to thegolfchannel.com and check out their lesson summaries, their swing tracker. Maryland's keeping a diary for you, and she's letting you read it. Can you believe it? We'll be right back, and when we come back, we're going to talk to Dr. James Ripley, who's helping out young Beth Vader quite a bit these days in the health assessment program. She just recorded her first top five finish at the Giant Eagle LPGA Classic. She'll join us by telephone. He will be with me in studio when we return. Welcome back to the show. Time for our Adams Tight Lies living room lesson. Michael Felden is on the chopping block this week. We're going to embarrass you, Michael. Are you ready for this? No problem. <laughs> He's a good sport. Barry's had a chance to take a good look at your golf swing, and so has Mike. And I'm going to let you take it from here. Actually, he does a lot of good things. Um, if you look at his setup, take a good look at his setup. It's very similar to Mike's. I think one thing you can do, Michael, is to take your left foot and toe it in a little bit. It's a little excessively towed out. Mike has a similar look, but you've got your left foot quite a bit pointed to center field. Try to turn it in a little bit. Okay. Let's take it away. Let's look at the swing. We're going to take it to the top. There's Michael going to the top. Good move. If you look at Mike Stanley going to the top, a lot of similarities except one big difference. Look at the width between Mike Stanley's hands and his ear, and look at the width between yours and your ear. I think Mike's got a lot more width built into his swing. And when you watch it coming down, we're going to see it coming down in a moment. Michael coming down. Look at that weight shift Michael makes through the ball. Mike Stanley. Now watch yourself, Michael. Watch your right foot, how hung back it appears. There's a lot of weight hanging back on your right foot. Mike Stanley, on the other hand, has all his weight, classic finish, weight shifted onto his front side. And I think that's something you should probably really work towards, Michael. Okay. It seems like two simple points you're going for here. Absolutely. We're going to see you down the line now. Watch Mike Stanley go to the top. Hands over his right shoulder. Michael Feldman's going to go to the top. The hands are more over his behind. Your first move down is different than Mike Stanley's. Mike's comes, his, his club drops down, straight down. Yours is going to drop out toward the golf ball, Michael. It's coming over the top, just right there. If you look at impact, look at the distance between the handle, between Mike's handle in his body and yours in your body, Michael. You're very cramped and crowded with your arms. Look at the extension Mike Stanley has. Yes, I see that. Yes, now let's take it to the finish. And I want you to look at the weight shift Mike Stanley has. Look at his finish. Look at his right shoe. And if you look at yours there, Michael, there's quite a bit hanging back. Mm -hmm. We want to try to work on that. And uh, I think you're not going to be consistent hanging back that much. Why don't you guys give us a visual of what he can do, whether it's drills or just things he needs to sure, see. Sure, sure. Um, I think the first thing he can do, the very first thing he can do, again, in his setup, something simple, try to take your left foot, instead of being so towed out, try to square it up a little bit, Michael. Okay. And I feel like at the top of your swing, you should definitely feel as though your hands get more over your right shoulder and not so over your behind and behind your head. That will help you a lot, because from there, you're coming over the top to get to the ball. I think something that would help you a lot is to do some mirror work and check where your golf club is at the top of your swing. So when you do come down, what we're looking for is your arms to get extended and your weight to shift through the ball to your front side, just like Mike Stanley is doing. We're seeing a little different move in yours. Mike, do you have anything you, you might want to add to that? Uh, I think the one thing you were talking about getting the hands coming down, I think I saw that mirror that uh, Rick Smith was showing in the segment before that mm -hmm. had the guy over it. And it showed him get up here, and he could see where his shoulder and his hands were. So when he started down, he did, if he went that way, he could see it in that mirror. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that would be a good, so you could keep your arms coming down this way instead of coming over this way. Just Michael, those seem like very clear-cut tips. Are, are you clear with everything that's been told to you? Uh, yes, I am, and I, I agree because I do have a problem with coming over the top. I'll either pull the ball to the left or I'll cut across mm -hmm. it and I'll send it out to the right or block it. Well, hopefully these will help you tremendously in uh, keeping...
keep us updated on your progress. Send us a letter and let us know what your, know what your next lowest score is going to be. <laughs> okay, and, and, and go Cougs. Go, go Cougs. Cougs. There we go. All right. <laughs> Good luck, Michael. All right, thank you. Michael You're just welcome. scored big, you, big dude, bonus points big. with Mike Stanley. You just mentioned Rick Smith helping Dennis Casey. We're going to see how he does with Marilyn as we key into Lesson 5 with Rick and Marilyn. Good. Do it again. Yeah, it's like a big buggy whip. Back. Excellent. Do it again. Back. Okay, good. Left shoulders behind nicely. Swing through smoothly. Oh, that's beautiful. Part of the problem is, is when you take a golf club, take a look at this. This has a lot of play in the shaft. It's easier to, t to feel. It's easier to feel the difference between the handle and the club head, which really helps me to get a feeling of the swinging motion. When you do this, it's stiff as a, stiff as a pipe, and it's harder to feel that. Mm -hmm. And I even recommend for you, I mean, as soft as the shaft may be, I, sometimes people that throw need even softer shafts so that they can feel that. So as you're swinging a heavier golf club, You've got to send it a little bit more out to right field, okay? Nice and smooth, hit the inside back of the ball. Excellent golf swing. Nice ball. See, that's the swinging motion that we want from the inside. That was good. The reason I'm trying to flatten your wrist is because otherwise I don't want you to try to flip oh, it, it over so much. Oh, it works when I do. I yeah, can, exactly. I can feel it. I mean, you know, when, I, when, the, when the wrist is flat, it's much easier to come You don't have it. to square it as much. Right. Marilyn has a situation where as she comes down, she has a tendency to cast. Casting comes from a hit impulse. Hit impulse relates to having your speeds at the wrong place at the wrong time. Well, we tap it, right? Good. Flat left wrist, feel it. Okay, here's the inside move. You got it, you got it. Now just take it all the way through and show me a full finish. Just relax now. Good, good. Inside, go ahead and finish it, good. Excellent golf swing. Now let's go ahead and hit it. We've got an obstacle course out in front of you here. You can do it nice and smooth. Excellent golf swing. Excellent. Now you start to feel release because the club's on such a good plane. As Dennis will tell you, I have almost no patience. Um, I want things fixed now, and so this is, I, this is teaching me patience because I realize it's not going to get fixed, and Rick said the same thing. It's not going to, it's not going to come tomorrow. It's going to be a long process. Back, flat left wrist, swing. Okay, good golf swing. I don't want an inside delivery without a full swinging motion. See, and that's part of why we throw, because when we throw, we hit, and we're done. There's no finish. That was a great swing. Back, good. Excellent golf swing. I think I hit more good balls today than I've ever hit. It just felt wonderful. I don't know, I think Marilyn's on her way to the tour one day, uh, if she's interested in doing it. Uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about a tour player that has found his game once again. Ernie Els wins the Open Championship because of fantastic bunker shots like this. Those pot bunkers are scary. We'll address them when we come back. We are back, and so is Ernie Els. Got his first major championship at the Open Championship. First win on the big scene since 1997 at the U.S. Open at Congressional and Ernie was one of a few men that were able to handle these bunkers at Muirfield. This is Padraig Harrington in a fairway bunker having to bail out the smart choice, fellas. Very smart shot. I don't think it's very many times you'll try to hit it over a fence. <laughs> I, I think you've got to admire him for having the ability to think about that shot. This is the best. Lee Jansen, you don't practice shots like this, do you? <sighs> Not here you don't. I don't, I don't see it. you do. It's a great shot. What do what shots like this and setups like this tell us about the golf swing? Do you need a lot of lower body to pull it off? No, I think most people are way too active with their lower body, especially going back. This Leave is Bob Tway. That was just all arms, basically. It was just a pickup. We've seen people practice hitting shots off their knees just to, to help with, I guess, swing plane or understanding mm -hmm. how the shoulders and the, and the hands work in the golf swing. And that's kind of what we're witnessing here is Absolutely. guys taking advantage of their upper bodies and their strength. Very soft hands. They're not squeezing that golf club, I can assure you of that. 
That was Ernie Els bunker shot at 13 on Sunday. And of course, this, probably the one that will go down in history, that won the tournament for him at sudden death, the first hole against mm. Thomas LeVay. He said he actually practiced that shot. Mike, you said they only do it for that tournament over there. You don't do it in America. You, know, you don't have any of those kind of shots. You know, we don't have any of the bunkers here that just, when it gets to the edge of the bunker, it just falls right straight down. You know, we don't have any of those kind of bunkers over here. Now, strangely enough, Ernie said that shot looked harder than it was, but I don't <laughs> buy it for a second. We've got a chance to open up the phone lines and take a phone call. Eric from Maryland is on the line. How can we help you, Eric? Yes, um, I, I was watching the show earlier, and I seen that you were t talking about Mike was keeping his elbow close to his body on the backswing. Um, I was wondering, now I've been told to do it both ways, which way is the correct way? Are you keep the elbow tucked close to the body or your arm up high? No, I don't think we ever mentioned Mike keeping his elbows close to his body. Um, Mike has a nice, very wide takeaway, a one-piece takeaway. Mike is not jammed in with his elbows. Um, what we might have mentioned was he was coming down, you don't want to get stuck with your elbows in. I, I think the, the right way, the correct way, I feel you should make it a nice one-piece takeaway and let your right arm, your right elbow come away from your body on the first part of the swing. Mike? I think I agree. You know, I think some of it is, if you get this elbow in close coming, da coming back, then it's going to probably stay close coming down and you'll get stuck. Mm -hmm. and I think you want it away from you a little bit you know, because you can get that wide arc that everybody talks about to hit it so far. You can get the wide arc, you know, instead of, heat, you can get it there instead of getting it in there. See how much more room you've got out here yep. to let the arm swing around. In the first part of your takeaway, do you ever feel your right elbow stays glued to your side? I used to. Mm -hmm. You know, when I got it real hooded, it would get there. But now, no, not anymore. Now I, well, yeah, now I try to let it, try to get some room between it. Mike, it's a very nice wide takeaway. I think that's probably what you should strive for. All right, Eric, thanks for that call. Let's run up a phone bill and take another one. <laughs> Chris from Pennsylvania, thanks for calling in. Thanks for taking the question. I'm currently taking lessons from a PGA pro. What we're working on is rotating over to my right knee and getting a good coil. I'm having a little trouble consistently doing this. I was wondering if you have a drill to help me out a little bit. I tend to dip a little bit if I uh, don't coil on the right side. Yeah, I think a good drill probably, again, if you get in front of a mirror and you check yourself, you don't want to get this way. You don't want to dip. I think what you should look into a mirror and see yourself shift your weight into your right thigh without getting it outside on the outside part of your thigh. It should be on the inside part of your thigh and the inside part of your foot. A drill, Mike, we were talking about a drill earlier with the hands on the shoulder and getting, the, getting your left shoulder over your right leg and feeling as all your weight stays on your right side. Yeah. Think that might help you? I think another drill is, is when you swing back, if you can feel like some weight gets back to your hip, you can get to your right side without having Never to go right, out there. You right. don't want this. And if anything, you want to try to keep it in here, but turn it feel a little weight back in your hip to where you can get it back into here. Yeah, that seems like a death move. You get outside your weight mm, like that. Yeah, death move. Really hard to get it back. Chris, thank you so much for calling in. We're glad we could help you. And, you know, you guys have been helping guys all night. Uh, why stop now? If you want to take lessons with Barry Goldstein, he can be reached at the phone numbers there on your screen, 607-797-2297 and 607-771-GOLF. I believe that's 4653. Uh, Johnston City, New York, and he can be reached through the internet as well. We will be back in just a moment to wrap things up with the guys. Don't go away. It's poll question time. Last time we were on, we asked you to pick one here. What would make playing with your significant other more enjoyable? 29% <laughs> said if they would just shut up and let me play. And, uh, God, I think I would log on and say the same thing. I don't know. All right, so uh, what do we have for you this week? Well, it's time to update. After five lessons, who do you think will win the Troubleshooter Challenge? Will it be Marilyn or will it be Dennis? And uh, on week one when we asked you, you all said Marilyn. Of course, she outscored him by 10 shots in their first round with Rick Smith. That might have been a little bit of an influence. So we want you to log on and tell us what you think right now through five lessons. You've seen the progress. And here is what you have coming your way next week in the Troubleshooter Challenge. See, this is excellent. After Dennis and Marilyn finish showing Rick the home movies from their cruise, Rick is determined to show Marilyn which end of the club to grip, while Dennis chips away at his short game. Oh, that's a good one. That's kind of where we got the night started with chipping, and uh, we've learned a lot. Barry, you're, you're a good teacher. Tell me Thank what you, you got coming up. 
I've got a lot going on, Kelly. Um, aside from all the lessons I give in New York and Florida, you know, I'm a single dad. I've got my two daughters here, Aubrey and Carly, and when I'm not with them, I'm finding time to make my first video. And I'm looking forward to it. Eagle Entertainment is a company in upstate New York who is producing it. He tells me it'll be done in early September. You can email me at the address they had shown on the screen earlier, and uh, I think it's going to be a great video. I'm looking forward to making it. It's called Play Golden Golf with Barry Goldstein. Uh, they've done a great job, and I'm looking forward to seeing the finished product. So feel free to email me. Yeah, congratulations on Thank that. You. And uh, lastly, we've only got about 10 seconds here, Mike, but uh, what we got coming up the John Deere Classic. We've got John Deere this week, and then my wife and I are trying to find some financing to get through the rest of the year and play, play a lot more tournaments, buy.com or tour events. Well, your golf swing is looking super good, so nice hopefully you won't have any problem doing that. Thanks. Guys, thanks so much. It's been a pleasure. pleasure. Thanks for having us, Mike. Kelly. Thanks. Pleasure. Thank you for watching. Good job, Mike. It's a pleasure.